Sorry. Is that you or me? A friend of ours has it now. Okay. Um, good evening. Welcome to the Churchill Borough Workshop meeting for June. We'll convene at 701. Uh, my name is I'm sorry. 704. Sorry. Oh, I was looking at that. Oh. <laughs> 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 Whatever time it is. <laughs> <laughs> Churchill standard time right there. We are convening the meeting and welcome you all. Uh, the first thing we will do is uh, come to our public comment. You roll call oh, first. Roll call first. Mm. Excuse me. So roll call this evening, um, President Jay Doran, Vice President Diane Long. Here. And Council Member Valerie Renthaler. Here. And Council Member Deb Cassini Klein. Here. And Council Member Andrea Vitello. Here. I have to check online to see if I got broken in yet. I don't see her name. I'm going to promote you, Mayor, so just watch for that. The panelist. Um, I think I did that. Did you see it? Maybe I have to run to somebody else. If you got there, it don't accept it. I got it. I don't see Brooke yet. So I'm going to pay okay. attention to that. And if she comes in a few minutes late, um, okay. we'll get her into the meeting. But we have a quorum. Great. Okay. We have a quorum. That's good news. Here. Here. <laughs> okay. Uh, we always love to hear from our residents. And uh, if you are a resident or a taxpayer, uh, we welcome your comments. You have up until uh, three minutes. Please begin by giving us your name and your address. And um, Are we in the room as well? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay. Recording. Recording. Good morning. My name is Derek Rickett. I live 1731 James Town Place, 15235. Uh, and I have a about the borough. Research from my street will cause my sub pump to blow out flood pump um, basement and also got my retaining wall on the side of my house flapping. Like, and, and what happened is in the winter time, I didn't realize that this was a problem because I call it winter escape resume, but it frees up the pipe and push the wall out where the water won't go out to the street because when they resurface, they cover up where the water is supposed to come out. Mm -hmm. So it's back enough. So what's your so, address? 1731 James Town Place. Thank you. So and, and I'm not sure how we handle this. Um, <coughs> we do not permit some pumps to discharge on the street because what ends up happening is some pumps tend to drain basements, even on dry days. And in the winter, my day seems about to help. I understand, but in the winter they tend to freeze up, creating icing and hazard issues. So uh, the borough has a policy and it enforces the policy when some pumps are daylighting onto the street and discharging onto our street. We send them a notice of you know, warning and then eventually notice a violation. And um, you know, that's something we kind of try to stay on top of for that reason. Mm -hmm. It's a concern to the borough to have in dry days discharging the water onto the road. So I'm not sure how that worked out. Um, but when we do paving jobs, we try to restore downspouts because it does become on rain days, mm -hmm. and that's typical. But some pumps, and I don't know what the contractor did, and I will look into it and I will follow up with them. Okay, plus it's plus it, plus it always been like the end. They should never send me any kind yeah, of. Yeah, that's what I guess that's what concerns me is how they have been handled. But I can assure you that we would not want to, to have it continue. Because yeah, we that's, really, that's fine, but yeah. the damage is done already, you know. Yeah, so what I need to find out is what may have happened, and, and I don't have an answer for you know, <laughs> if, if any damage has been caused. Let's look at the start and see what may have happened, okay. and you just work our way backwards from there. If I can, I'll give you a piece of paper. You can just give me your contact information. Okay. So like, probably first and tomorrow, if not, then by mid after mid day, I'll get back <clears> to you with or we'll go to your house, we'll see what happens. Okay, and kind of follow up from there. Um, I know you said you were, I'm sorry, my name is Betty Regan, and I know that the same address is there, 1731 Jamestown Place. Um, what do you, I mean, what do you propose to do as an Yeah, so typically some pumps, 
will be if they can't easily um, have a solution, they, they may have to do a, a dry well on their property. But if they can discharge them earlier before they get to the street, the water tends to um, infiltrate and kind of lie right there. What we don't want is the direct curb edge, street edge discharge, because that you can kind of see them when they pump, they kind of gosh, depending on, especially okay, if they're not right, right. exactly. But mine's not like a completely on the street, but they get more asphalt in my drivers. But you'll see it when you yeah, come at that's why I need to really get in my on it. right. You'll see it more that when they did it, is it is in my um drivers. It's not pushing out on it because when you see the way it is, the sub pump is almost here, it's on the street, and the water run basically is going into my grass, most of it anyway. Yeah, that's what we like to see. So, in general, that's the best way we do it. But at the time, some people are going to have their own as far as installing a, a dry well kind right. of put it outside. Oh, I'm saying right there. Well, yeah. I think as Alex is saying, it's probably best for our folks to come and take a look no, I'm, as I'm soon as possible. Yeah, then we'll know exactly what you're talking about and we can we can see what the situation okay. is. Is that is that satisfactory yeah, with you? Sure. Okay. Great. Thank you for coming. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, thanks for you coming. Stay. You're welcome to stay. Hey, you're welcome to stay if you want you to. Don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Well, no, we appreciate you. it. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Have a nice to meet you. Good text. Okay. Derek okay, just sorry. retired. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Nice. Do we have anyone else you'd like yeah, to? We have one. All right. Fine. Who Fine. Has their hand okay. Is. Sandy, I'm going to go ahead and uh, promote you to pause so you can go ahead and uh, accept that. And then go ahead and let me speak. You're muted, Sandy. Yeah. Hi, this is Sandy Fox, 38 Holland Road. Um, a couple of things. One, I, I want to uh, thank Valerie and Alex for getting the no truck sign on Holland Road. Uh, hopefully that will prevent the large semi-tractor trailers from cutting through the neighborhood and pulling down the uh, the power lines, which they did uh, in the past year, twice within a week. Um, but the other issue I, I notice on the agenda is uh, a person or company, I'm not sure which, requesting an exception to the size of a billboard. And I understand there'll be a public hearing about this later this month, but I do want to express my strong uh, negative reaction to billboards in Churchill. I think it detracts from the natural beauty of the environment. It's an eyesore. I consider it like trash. Um, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, mean, I think we can address this briefly right now. Uh, our solicitor is here and we can talk about the process, Sandy. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the the first uh, important thing to note is that the, this borough council has no jurisdiction over whether or not to approve this variance or the billboard use itself. Um, you know, the zoning hearing board has exclusive jurisdiction as to whether or not to permit the, the billboard, number one, and secondly, to either approve or deny the variances that are being sought by the, the applicant. And so, you know, we, we, the, the, uh, Billboard use in this particular zoning district in the C2 district is permitted as a special exception, uh, which simply means it's similar to a conditional use. A conditional use is a use that's permitted as long as you can meet certain criteria, and that's decided by borough council. Um, a special exception, as we may have covered last month, um, is very similar, but uh, in that it's a use that's permitted if you meet the criteria. However, instead of the borough council making that uh, determination, it is the Zoning Hearing Board. Uh, similarly, on the variances that are requested, the Zoning Hearing Board has exclusive jurisdiction over those. So it will be up to the applicant uh, to uh, establish to the satisfaction of the Zoning Hearing Board that they meet the criteria for a variance, which includes essentially that there's unique characteristics of the property which create a hardship, um, which do not allow the applicant to comply with the, with the, the, zone, the relevant zoning code provisions. So um, folks are welcome to attend that hearing. Again, it is not going to be borough council making that decision. 
It will be a separate independent body known as the Zoning Hearing Board. It will be located, uh, the hearing will be here on June 26th at seven o'clock. So uh, if you're those, those folks are interested, they're welcome to come to that hearing. Um, <coughs> on the general issue about whether billboards should be in Churchill or not, um, whether we like it or not, all lawful uses as we've talked about for many, many times in the past have to be provided for. Uh, so we can't ban any particular use in the borough of Churchill. So um, I think that basically covers it. Although there's obviously lots of people who have very strong feelings about billboards. Um, and I just guess, guess I'll just leave it at that. So is there anything else you want me to cover? No. Okay. Okay. Um, Sandy, thank you for your comment. I hope that that helps to answer your question about the, the borough of Churchill's responsibility that is the council that is not in our hands and who is on the zoning hearing board who's on the zoning hearing board i know it's listed on the website yeah. um we'll uh, just refer you to that i don't think we have we have that handy right for the moment mm -hmm. i think we're we do have a vacancy we i know vacancy. I, we have a vacancy i know there's only, for a while. There's only two yes. out of three uh appointees there so if you Sandy, if you know anybody who's interested in joining the zoning hearing board, certainly mm -hmm. pass that name along. Or yourself. Yes, there you go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's move yeah, on. Yeah, the information is on the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there is there anyone else who'd like to speak to tonight, Alex? We have one call in user, uh, but no one else has raised their hands. Okay. So it's all about that call in user to mute themselves. I assume they hear a request in their ear that says you have been committed to speak right. or asked on you, and they are not accepting it. So I assume they're not looking to make comment. Well, we'll give them a minute to connect here if they choose to. We have about uh, 10 to 10 Bs. Okay. Um, besides the panelists who are in the room here and mm -hmm. also online with us. Okay. And I will see Brooke at this moment. All right. Okay. I guess the, that person does not want to speak. But that's yes. going to need to be good. Okay. Okay. Then we'll move to uh, the uh, discussion items. That is, if you all have received the um, minutes for the uh, workshop and the council meeting for May, is there any question or any corrections? Okay. Then we'll act on that next week. Uh, also, we have um, the agency and staff reports that were in your packet. Are there any questions? Just want to highlight for the first time, uh, Michelle and Ashley were able to get the reports at the earlier meeting, so you have a longer um, time to look at them. Mm -hmm. They don't change. Meetings, right. right. Gives you more chance to see what the staff is doing. Okay. Um, the only thing I want to raise under Wilkinsburg Penn Joint Water Authority is that I've attended several meetings um, in the last month and heard from other municipal officials about the same difficulties in billing that they are having, and that they're very upset about that. And I also learned, which we should all know, that uh, not all municipalities that are within their jurisdiction are represented on the board. So that is that is mm -hmm. that is something that was news to me. So we'll have to see what we do about that, if anything. Right? Okay. Anybody else? Oh, um, I'll just add under under here under government under a, a building inspection um, at the Turtle Creek Valley Cog. Uh, there was discussion <laughs> about the hiring of what had formerly been an LGA intern. That person is being trained, uh, but I don't know when that would become available. And there are, of course, concerns about that. Yeah, they have code inspectors. This person, I think, is going to be helping them with some of the. They would have new software. Yeah. I met Paul last week. Okay. And his role, I thought, was more of like looking at all of us and what we're doing in our various different approaches because i think they're they're looking at maybe even working with the bear institute figuring out how to marketing the code okay. services that they have beyond the cog footprint so a larger footprint okay. with an allegation that wasn't clear then because they are training someone to work part-time um, that could be because they've been ramping up and getting more okay i thought um, that was the same all right yeah okay so okay uh 
management and government. Unfortunately, our council president was unable to join us tonight, but um, we have openings. Uh, we have uh, the uh, ad hoc uh, zoning, uh, and that is that. That's not the point. But the ad hoc zoning committee is a committee that has been formed to work with our consultant, uh, Pashik, and is it still MTR? Yes. Yeah, Pashik MTR. Um, and that picks up on our prior uh, multi-municipal planning process. Uh, and we are looking at our zoning ordinances and beginning, uh, we're the beginning of doing that. So there'll be ongoing information and interaction on that subject. What do you want to say about that? I would just mention that, you know, Alex, I think has wisely set up a you know, weekly or bi-weekly meeting yeah. uh, that I've been involved with, with uh, Jenny from, from uh, Pashik and sort right. of, you know, keeping us accountable and make sure we keep the ball moving forward on that. So we hope, uh, I think we're hoping for a later in June meeting with Alex and I and Jenny, uh, as well as the ad hoc committee to, to see kind of where we are, where we're going to the next steps. I think June 22nd, roughly, is what we're thinking about. Yeah. Right? Yes. 10 a.m. Wow. Okay, then um, we're still looking for people on both the uh, pre committee, right, and the zoning hearing board. Deb, do you have any applicants for the pre committee? Yes. In the agenda, we have that. Yes. yes. Under the oh, it's under climate. Yep. Okay, because it's here also. Action. Climate right. action. So we just announced that we have an opening again still on the zoning hearing board and encourage all of our residents to consider. Uh, whether or not they would like to serve on the zoning hearing board. If you have an interest, please contact Alex and he will describe to you what the position involves. It has not been greatly in demand in the last several years, so it should not be a large commitment of time, but Alex will explain to you what, uh, what's involved. Okay, so finance committee. Okay, Alex, did you yeah. We had a great first meeting. We did. Um, so a couple of weeks ago now, right? Yep. We met with the local government academy who has hired a consultant who is serving the borough by doing a financial health assessment. It's really modeled after the what used to be known as the early intervention program that the DCD had done, the Department of Community Economic Development of the Commonwealth. And it will look at our financial health, sort of like a checkup, when you go annually to your doctor, your physician, and, you know, vitals are important and comparisons like, for example, age groups, but for local governments, it's comparisons to benchmarking mm -hmm. to other communities of similar size. Right. And they did it. They provided a preliminary um, look at where we stand, just very high level expenditures. Again, other Allegheny County communities of similar size. A couple of things that stood out. Um, one was demographically, we're one of the older communities. Yeah. We had mm -hmm. a uh, pretty significantly higher median age. Well, also, as you all know, the very limited rental housing, uh, we are a single family home uh, homeowner occupied community, which I think we all recognize, but it really stood out when you look at how other communities have a greater mix um, of housing types and, and uh, owner versus rental uh, standpoint. So given that, the rents are super high, which is, again, an anomaly within the system, but it may be explained because of the same, small sample size of rentals. Um, but we'll be meeting with them on a regular basis. And what's exciting about this is not only are we not necessarily paying for this, we're getting outside look at our stuff. Um, there is possibilities for them to help us with some implementation items. And one of the ones we are considering is um, investing in a software package that allows us to, to do more better governmental accounting uh, we use QuickBooks, which is a very common software package, not bad for government accounting, but not set up or designed for necessarily local government accounting. And if we did make that, um, if that becomes a recommendation, it may be paid for mm -hmm. out of, out of oh. the local government mm -hmm. academy or the state. What was really exciting, though, is we had people from Harrisburg attend the meeting, and a lot of eyes right now on Churchill because they're excited about the things we're doing with uh, the peer consultant work that we agreed to last week. We yes. sent a letter mm -hmm. for some help to hire Jason Daly again on the state's dime. And what Jason is doing for us um, is helping us develop an RFP, a request for proposal or a request for bids for the public works contract. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, they kind of dovetail nicely together. Yeah. The state sees the model of what Churchill does <clears throat> for small community outsourcing public works is one they'd like to replicate. Mm -hmm. So they want to invest in our efforts. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> it's very exciting. Very exciting. Very yeah, exciting. It, it was nice that they gave us uh, spreadsheets and comparing us with other municipalities mm -hmm. and neighboring communities. And we're very unique. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very in a good way in a good way right? in a very good yeah way. So, um, so that was really nice to see and absolutely people speak very highly of churchill which is always good to hear yeah, we, we play leadership when we can yes <laughs> um i for everybody also that uh that re initial report from that group is uh in your packet mm -hmm. and i'd encourage you to look at it it has that material that alex was talking about one of the things that interested me was that we had a larger number of school age children than I thought we had. Mm -hmm. I thought that, that's true too. Yeah, uh, it really did. And <laughs> that speaks to the issue of where are they going to school and do we know who they are, where they are, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's really a telling piece of information. Well, you mentioned a statistic, I, I don't know, that came directly from the school district because we had that discussion. It was an old, I think it's 8%. I don't know how old this is now. Eight percent of the school age children in Churchill attend the Woodland Hills. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it keeps going. Very well. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> infrastructure committee, Jeb, you have something from an in infrastructure? Yeah, I just wanted to let everybody know we're working um, with PennDOT to hopefully put together a comprehensive plan to address, you know, the safety issues at uh, Lewin Lane. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have a meeting tomorrow at yeah. 10. It's, a, it's an ongoing thing, but at least, you know, we're, we're definitely making strides and that's our next step is tomorrow. So okay. that's my fingers on that. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's 10 o'clock, you said? 10 o'clock tomorrow okay. morning. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So then, um, Dad, would you like to speak to the uh, sanitary sewer lateral inspections? Uh, you know, nothing really new to report. The uh, the ordinance, I uh, believe, uh, Alex was advertised, right? Correct. Um, so it will be teed up for adoption uh, next Monday. Okay. Um, you know, again, this is the ordinance that's going to require a CCTV of the sanitary sewer laterals prior to the <clears throat> transfer, uh, just to protect protect buyers of uh, property in the church. Yeah. We do want to note, though, on the agenda, we talked about having a, just two action items that we're not going to be taking up. Yeah. And those were with this building and the two projects, one to add a locker room for right. the police department and the other for public accommodating bathroom, bathrooms, right now they're not right. fully accessible. And um, we have some things, I think, contractually to figure out between now and next Monday. Mm -hmm. So while it's on the agenda, <clears throat> there's nothing that was in motion, therefore nothing at table. But I wanted to make sure if you're following this at home, you may be wondering why we kind of skipped over this. Sure. Yeah. We're still evaluating the bid documents, but I'll just now we'll hopefully be in a position to recognize <laughs> approval next month. Next month. Right. Great. Thanks. Okay. So next is Communications Committee. Yes. <clears throat> um, we, the communications committee is currently working on a community video project uh, that we have been instrumental, <clears throat> excuse me, in uh, doing this. The borough will be creating three videos um, that will be showcased on our website and other media, social medias and things like that. Um, one of them will be a welcome to a Churchill video from the mayor themselves. Uh, we also are going to have another video to talk about our community, all the things that are happening, such as our community day, the bunny parade, holiday, um, our dinners, all of the things that people are aware of, all the things that are happening in our community, as well as volunteering and things like that. Um, uh, also, we're going to have another video to talk about our council, what the role of council is, our staff, our police, EMS, mm -hmm. Um, just an edu educational short video. Um, those will be, like I said, on our website and will be readily available sometimes. You know, video is king, as people say. Yes, and, yeah. um, mm -hmm. People like watching videos, so we will be doing those um, shortly. Also, uh, somebody collected some drone footage of yes. our area. Yes, we did. Uh, which will be really cool. That will also mm -hmm. be on our website to help create and mesh these videos together. Mm -hmm. There's my house. <laughs> yeah. I think what the, the main the purpose of these videos is to one educate um, educate people 
in a borough as well as outside of borough. Also showcase all the awesome things that we do and how great our borough is to attract people to right. move to our area. Right. So and I have to say, going I've been going around, you know, videotaping and what have you, and you just you really uh, sometimes don't realize how beautiful our little is beautiful. borough is until you're going up and down for hours. And then we got some great drone footage. So I'm That's really cool. excited to put these three pieces together. And I think it'll be great for our residents to see. Mm -hmm. And again, like you said, people who might be interested in moving to Churchill, you know, they go, everybody Googles now and goes on websites and let's see what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have such a wonderful mayor. It's nice to have him do an introduction to everybody. Oh, and for sure. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just think I'm hoping that it'll be done sometime mid August. Yeah. Right. Cause I also want to capture some video of our community day as well yeah, and that will probably great. be one of the last that's, yeah, yeah. That's really that'll be one of the last things i drop in like we'll have it almost all done except that, that. so like what <laughs> <laughs> a couple of times <laughs> yeah so, so one yeah. of the things I want to mention that I just heard this afternoon uh is the fact that this drone footage would have cost this borough a yeah, lot of money, money. Mm -hmm. and but, because we have Ms. Deb Cassini Klein on our council, yep. uh, that was done at an extraordinary, like cost. almost zero, almost, almost zero. zero. Everything else, yeah, it really was so, right. Yeah. Kudos. I have friends who make only favors. <laughs> <laughs> that's a coffee and lunch, right? Right. right. Well, that's basically it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Videos. There was a Facebook video that the mayor posted with the police chief. Yeah. Yep. Showcasing yes. our new yeah, police vehicle. vehicle. Yeah. Right. What I loved about it was really all of the council members are welcome to do such mm -hmm. things. I mean, that was just perfect. It was short. Mm -hmm. It was clear. It was exciting. Like, wow, we got a new car. Here's There's no that. script. We just. <laughs> no, you don't need a script. No, you, you two were natural. Yeah, yeah. Right. I was shooting it on my iPhone. So right. Nothing you know, fancy, but. Just to mention about the police car, you know, one of the things we, we're proud of now is the, the new light bar on it. Yeah. And actually, Andrew and I saw it the other night. Mm -hmm. We were at the graduation and the R10 was out on the road. And that light bar was on, and I'm telling you what, you can see that car. <laughs> <Is> it <right? laughs> and that new lighting stuff. Right. I mean, it's for safety for our officers, yeah, for, right. for, for uh, motorists, for everybody. All right, but right. I, I actually took a picture of it, but it didn't do it justice. No, yeah. it has to be no. a little video, right? So you can see how bright, <laughs> right, and noticeable that is. So, but it was badly know, needed. You know, and Ron it's did a great job of, yeah, you know, taking care of all. Yeah, Ron really did. Anything yeah. else in communications, Tom? Um, no. Okay. Climate action. Yeah. Oh, climate action. That's me. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see here. Where's my climate action? Well, we, um, there's an opening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we have two positions on the tree committee. It's a three-year term fight and it has five members and we have two, two positions and I am making a re uh, recommendation of two candidates, Jay Gams and Tracy. Well, my whole committee, yes, yeah, just saying. Yeah. Um, Jay Gams and Tracy Shirksness uh, to fill the spots on the tree committee. They all, uh, Ken Balky yeah. also knows them and they know Ken. So that is my, my recommendation to the council. Uh, secondly, uh, the Climate Action Committee is working with Connect to establish a five year climate action plan. It won't be as grandiose as maybe some other bigger municipalities because of the size of our borough and quite frankly, the lack of big businesses. So yeah. because we're mainly residential, but we still need some kind of plan. So um, I've been meeting with Eric Rab from Connect a few times. There's also a possibility through them, we may get an intern to help us with this year plan who is a student. So that that's in the works, and I think that will be a very good thing for um, just our community in general. Um, and also one one more note about the newsletter, which has to do with climate action. And I've mentioned this before. Our newsletter is coming out probably around the end of around, around the end of June, right? Wouldn't you say last mm -hmm. week of June? Yeah. Um, and I've mentioned this about the solar co-op. Mm -hmm. There will be a, a little blurb there about it, where our residents can go online. And if you're interested at all of even just getting information about it, there's no commitment, but you down the road will save 
hundreds, if not thousands of dollars if you convert to solar energy. So that is a, a great thing. And it is through Connect as well, uh, people they're working with. But look for that in the newsletter because I think that that could be helpful to a lot of people. That's all I okay. have for now. Right. Can I just add a little bit more, more to that? Sure. Because uh, I've been having some meetings with, um, I forget the girl's name, half, half tiers. I don't remember. Her name. Anyway, she sent, um, it's about the um, composting. Oh, okay. So I've attended a few of those meetings, and it's, it's a um, food digester. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they talked about at the meeting was like, we collect our leaves and put them in a compost, but our residents are throwing grass in garbage oh. bags into the regular trash. Oh. And that, that's a big waste of, of a recyclable material. Right. Only it's going to these landfills. So, I mean, there's nothing we could do it right now, but in the future, we need to look at some, some way. How can we recycle that grass as well? Where do we take it? What what can we do with it? You know, I know they don't want it in the leaf out on it, but I know it's a good source of nitrogen. Nitrogen and right. it works together. But uh, they were doing that, and um, there was a letter that they sent out to sent out, I'll just read it real quick. It's to it's to Thomas J. Vilsack, Secretary of Agriculture in the U.S. It says, um, "Dear Secretary Vilsack, this is with enthusiasm I support the City of Pittsburgh's application for the USDA's Compost and Food Waste Reduction Grant." The project will convene multiple municipalities in Allegheny County to create a plan to unify the composting, a composting plan. I support this mission because it's directly cor correlated to Churchill Burroughs' mission, vision, and values. By donating my time to this program, I would like, I would like to lay the foundation of volunteerism for all Churchill Borough residents. Thank you for your consideration. Signed, Mayor Churchill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, maybe we should copy the council members about that. I, I think I sent a copy. To you. Yeah, we'll have it in the binder. Okay. okay. Yeah, because in our various travels, it'd be good to know that that you're doing that. Yeah, I mean, I, I to me, it's it's a no brainer. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Not well, to mention all the supermarkets at the end of the day when they're. You know they're cleaning, putting out their produce. Mm -hmm. That's all going into the waste. Yeah, mm -hmm. that can all be picked up. And right. They were talking about they do this yeah. in New York City. So, so maybe on your agenda, the big big thing. The discussion of compost at the climate action because yeah. Representative yeah. Salisbury was here. Oh yes, yeah, she, yeah. yeah she had done a number mm -hmm. of things as a Swissville council member yes. um, that she had alerted us to. And one of them was there was a person looking to relocate. Some of their activities. Yes. They were mm -hmm. affiliated with Carnegie yeah. Mellon. Yes. And I was trying to track that down. So maybe that's something we can do offline. Mm -hmm. but that's what the Climate Action Committee, we could, mm -hmm. there's so much because we're unusual in the sense that we have a multi municipal leaf composting arrangement that mm -hmm. actually sells the product mm -hmm. and delivers it. So we just kind of take it for granted. Sure. And then, mm -hmm. you know, how can we build on it? We get more grants. Mm -hmm. Can we demonstrate right. and do more things? We certainly have. Potential space, not necessarily there, but other borough parcels that are along Red Eye Road, they're kind of working parcels from when the parkway kind of cut yeah. through. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, mm -hmm. for what it's worth, there's a lot we could be doing. In yeah, I mean, th this is a, a classic example of how many different places each of us go in association mm -hmm. with all the different things that we do, right. and how important it is for all of us to know when these issues come up so that we can reinforce. Uh, Representative Salisbury's office, um, you know, you can follow up with them and and uh, they they should be able to get you all the information about that. Her. Mm -hmm. She's going to be busy for the next couple of weeks, <laughs> but her staff budget, yeah. but her staff mm -hmm. uh, would be around to do that. So um, I passed up my own committee, so I'm going to go back and catch that now. <laughs> Um, we had a report, a very interesting report from um, from our chief of police and Ron, and um, an issue that was brought to our attention, and it's a serious issue. Uh, I think that we can't deal with this alone, but in the group, you know, somehow we may. Schumann Center, which was yes. the only place where where police departments could send uh, young people who had committed serious crimes were alleged to commit serious crimes, was closed uh, by the county. And there are many people who applauded that closure. The problem is nothing was put in its place. 
No plan B. No. Yeah. So where we are now is that, you know, with all this rise in crime and violent crime and, and young people doing each other in, actually, uh, and we, we learned some things about why that is, too. They're using weapons now that they can't control. Right. So when they shoot, the kickback is such that it's, it sends the, the, the spray of bullets like this. Right. So we're seeing increasing numbers of people who were bystanders who are getting hit with bullets because of that. So this becomes, everybody's aware of it, it's becoming a more and more serious problem. But as far as our committee is concerned, um, we need to be as informed about this as we can, talking to people as much as we can because a solution must be found. Didn't the county put out an RFP they, and then Adelphi? They did. They did. The county put out an RFP and Adelphi is in there. Yeah. They're, 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 they created a board with police officers on yeah. it, um, counselors, Adelphi teachers. Adelphi was the only, the only applicant Correct. for that RFP. And, and that's where they put another the mm -hmm. board together with yeah. actual police officers, actual mm -hmm. people who have been in Schumann mm -hmm. and counselors, teachers, okay. which I think is the right way to go yeah. because we need a solution. I 100% agree with you. We needed a plan B, and but look, at least they're taking the time to try to make plan B a better plan B, right. you know, so, but we had to stick on them and hold them accountable to do so. Yeah, because these kids are being let off. Yeah, back or, or, yeah. or in the Allegheny County Jail, which is no what place for me there. You know, <laughs> I know when the, this happened, this closed up. It was right after COVID. Yeah, and mm -hmm. Truman had seen record low numbers. Correct. Yeah, um, partially because of COVID. COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now that not that it's mm -hmm. over, but well, and the yeah. chief's point, which is what I need to get across to everyone, the chief's point is that the efforts that are being being made are all well and good. We have a new administration coming mm -hmm. in in January. Which and will make a expectations difference. For that. But meanwhile, week after week, we see increasing amounts of violent crime. Mm -hmm. And and so the question mm -hmm. is, is there anything that can be done about that in the shorter term? In the interim of, yeah. And, right. and it's very, very difficult. But I wanted to share that with you because that is something that our chief brought to our committee. And he's very concerned. Um, also, <laughs> interesting is, but I was going to talk to you about this and then we didn't, didn't mm -hmm. get it together. Um, there are uh, apparently some increasing numbers of people who are moving into the borough who speak only Spanish. So he's concerned from a, from a police standpoint, particularly when it comes to mental health and things like that. Uh, they're very uncomfortable dealing with people that they don't understand what they're saying. So we need to think about how we can, we have recommendations about how they can, be, that sounds like maybe a multi-municipal thing to me. Yeah. You know, a resource. So we'll talk about yeah, that and and, uh, yeah, and uh, try to see if we can read some recommendations too. Yeah, you and I can touch base yeah. because I, yeah. I emailed you a few yeah. options. The other thing you mentioned, uh, and this makes sense as well, is that um, the police do not have an updated list of new residents. And for them, of course, that is extremely important. Mm -hmm. The question is, how do we get that information and who can get that information? So, uh, and that needs to be available to them uh, at least every three months. So, uh, and, and what adds to that is what we've already talked about, which is the visible numbers on the houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've already acted on that. Uh, moving on to uh, the uh, public works program and, and uh, Ralph, we're talking about some very interesting things having to do with dealing with some of the staffing we can use at the fire department and the inspection, the code enforcement things we just talked about. So in the perhaps by the next meeting, maybe the next one, finance will probably be hearing this before we do uh, as a whole. Um, we're looking at some creative solutions here and I'm, I'm feeling really good about them. So uh, that's in the works there. Now, I'll come to my very next responsibility, which is the Ad Hoc Deer Committee. Here. Um, the Deer Committee submitted a, a, an, an article to the newsletter for publication coming up. We had the public hearing. Uh, it wasn't really a public hearing. It was a, it was a public Tom meeting. meeting. Tom yeah. Tom uh, and uh, Matt and I are going into the next phase now, which is extensive research on what the state of the art is and it, you know everywhere in the country who the experts are 
a lot of what I'm reading, I've already read because we did this four or five years ago, but there are some new things that we've got to try to track down and some research has been done about, better research has been done about what works and what doesn't. So we will be reporting to you as we gather that information and then we will be scheduling another public uh, meeting uh, to see what people's experiences are over the summer. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the two things are mentioned in the article. One is to remind people that there is an ordinance in the borough for feeding wild animals, including deer, and preliminarily, anecdotally, what I'm learning is that even in our community, concentrations of deer occur where there are individuals who are feeding the deer. So we need to bring that home in terms of reporting the research that's been done on that. Mm -hmm. If you live in a community where people are, are, are feeding deer, you do have more deer, you know, per square mile. There's no question about that. So that's the that's the deer committee. Now, education in the school district is Brooke with us? Uh -huh. No. Okay. Um then the zoning update, uh, Alex, you want to yeah, talk about that a little more? Yeah, we covered that already. No, yeah, we okay, right fine. Mm -hmm. Mayor? Yeah, you know what, I had, originally had something I wanted to talk about, but I, I, Alex and I talked to a little bit of people about it, so we're going to put that to the side. Mm -hmm. But my question now was, we had those portable signs that flashed the speed limit. Mm -hmm. They were a small portable thing that hung on the yeah, they, on, on a pole. They no longer work, the portable ones. Yeah, I think so, what Ralph told pole. me last time yeah. that the batteries were were exhausted and the, the price of the new battery was too expensive to yeah, replace. I, I didn't hear that part of it. My understanding was they were not offered. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at how we, can we explore mm -hmm. to get those portable things back. Right. You know, I think we had two of them. Yeah, so part of the discussion, there's two things going on. Part of the discussion tomorrow is what more traffic calming things we do along Beulah Road. Mm -hmm. Not just Lewin Lane, really, both north yeah. and south of the Beulah, parkway. Yeah. Two, we have the LSA grant, local share grant, that was to specifically buy those types of signs. Three, we've already mm -hmm. purchased some, and we're waiting for the permit to be approved yeah, by yeah. Um, But yeah, I think going forward, a couple things need to happen. One is we need to develop a policy for traffic calming so we can think about the best approach is besides your, you know, the traffic speed warning signs, mm -hmm. but other um, the things like speed tables mm -hmm. uh, or humps or other things okay. we can do to lower speed and, and make things a little bit more challenging. Uh, but we need a policy, mm -hmm. like a traffic policy. It's one of the things that the infrastructure mm -hmm. committee will be working on. But tomorrow would be a good time to talk about more of those signs. And at times, the that district depend on <laughs> lends them. Yeah, you know, they'll lend them. The state police, I think, has a system to lend yeah. some of those uh, where you can drag them into place and right. have them. But um, I, I was in Connecticut last week. It came off an interstate ramp, I-95 in New Haven. There were four speed tables between the ramp and the Ikea. Mm -hmm. And they were serious. And, you know, for people who say, well, we can and won't, you know, on Beachwood Boulevard, they're happening around the county, yeah. the city mm -hmm. of Pittsburgh. Um, beware, if you like to drive fast, There'll be a day where you might find yourself kind of a little bit airborne mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you're not paying attention to the speed tables that are getting installed. They're not meant to make mm -hmm. your car go airborne. They're not a speed bump. Mm -hmm. However, they will jolt you yeah. if you are significantly above the speed. Mm -hmm. And is what I can't emphasize this enough. When our police officers do enforcement, they are pulling over many residents. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we've seen the enemy, and it's mm -hmm. us. <laughs> In the mirror, we all drive. Too fast than we probably mm -hmm. should. We have to we have to uh, have a price for that, and that's part of what we're talking about in terms of who has responsibility for allowing boroughs to use technology in order to catch speeders. Right. And I've been squawking mm -hmm. incessantly about that to our elected. Pennsylvania is the only state that does not permit local that's governments mm -hmm. the. Ability to use to radar like the state police uses yes. to to enforce speed regulations. Mm -hmm. We are only able to paint white lines, and you'll notice those. Right. And use a stopwatch to try to measure the the amount so that a person is going above yeah. the speed limit. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, our red has no idea. 
our <laughs> residents have no idea that we can't use technology to you know, coach theaters so to be on Hill Road. Yeah. No, what year? So, yeah, um, what is this? Anyway, that, I just wanted to make <laughs> that editorial <laughs> comment. <laughs> we we have been buggy. So talking mayor, to legislators about yeah, that. Mayor, I'll look into more about the yeah. signs. I'll get with yeah. Ralph to see what yeah, And the other thing, too, is, you know, in the past, uh, at, at the corner of Lewin Lane, that one house on the, on the well, as you're coming down Lewin on the right-hand side, you had all those bushes there that made it difficult. When so, you came down, you mm -hmm, couldn't see. Mm -hmm. So one time I went down there with my clippers, and I shaved them all down. <laughs> well, they're gone now. Right, but we, we cut them. Now when you come down Lewin Lane, if you look to the left, there's some trees that are against that guy's fence. That kind of make it difficult yeah, to see who's here. coming. There, 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 there are a couple of trees that really should come down. You live the right within the side triangle yeah. um, of a road. That is a, a technical term. Yeah. Being the visible distance mm -hmm. you can see left or right yeah. at right. an intersection. And that requires a conversation. To clear. And and you've got to kind of sneak out yeah. a little yeah. bit more than you want to to see if anybody's got. If those trees were gone, you'd, you'd have a little bit more visibility. Okay. You need to do that. But, all right, leave updates. Contract with Kirkham. Yeah, that one um, basically we didn't use a lot of salt and we buy salt through the COG mm -hmm. and we have to basically renew the agreement because the agreement wasn't anticipating no one would use salt. Right. And when we make agreements to do salt, we have minimum purchases. So if we don't change it, we would be stuck to buy the salt for it. What they're doing is making arrangements for us to be able to do that, sort with them, and lock in the rate going forward. Okay. So um, all the council, government, SHACOG, the communities are being asked to do this, and that's one that we're doing. And then the other one we had um, on the agenda, I'll put it up here. Lockworks. Yeah, so let's put that up on the share screen. Um, a lot of activity has been going on in grant writing. Uh, last week, last month, you all approved um, the Greenways Trails Recreation Program grant that was submitted on May 31st. On May 26th, we did um, apply for walk works. Last year, we did that as well. We were denied because we were uh, not within the criteria that they had, which was last year's program required that you be in the environmental justice community. This year, um, they've um, softened the language, but since we got the Act of Allegheny County grant, they strongly encourage us to reapply. And so we did a resolution last year. We'd like council to do another resolution next week. Uh, we're gonna ask for more money because we got a $30,000 grant from the county and we wanna match it to have a 50,000. This was um, this was a recommendation of the multi municipal plan and the two multi municipal plan participants, Monroeville and Wilkins Township have completed their active transportation plans, right. as well as Forest Hills has as well. They've completed right. one. So, if all goes well, the uh, Walk Works grant will come in September, and then we'll be able to December sometime in there be able to bid it out and get a contractor who would help us develop something that would increase safety for pedestrian, vehicular, bicycle movements for active transportation within the community. And with the Allegheny Land Trust, Churchill Valley Country Club. You know, being the greenway, mm -hmm. it's real important. We figure out ways to get people safely yes. to that. Mm -hmm. that. Yes, yes, that's okay. It's not safe. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, on, on the safety and transportation issue, one thing I forgot to say was that we had a report at our, in our uh, public safety committee meeting from both our chief of police and our director of public works, and it was about deer. And Interestingly enough, they have noticed a significant reduction in the number of deer car collisions uh, in the last few years. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if the deer are getting they, smarter. They're moving yeah. a lot no, I really think they're I getting think they domesticated. Are they are. I think they are. They, they, they are. I watched one. I, this is, I was sitting, coming off the parkway up to go to Black Ridge. Yeah. I watched a deer wait for a light and then walk <laughs> yeah. down the road. And I, I was with somebody because I'm like, am I seeing this? I don't, <laughs> think, that, like, I don't think that we have a reduction in density. No, I know. it, it went straight to the, the cemetery. Part. It was anyway, fine. I thought I, thought I, would, I, thought I would mention that. <laughs> yeah, that was was fine. Fine. <laughs> Maybe that's not an accurate anything. We're not close to an accurate that's measure fine. anymore of, of our deer population. <laughs> that yeah. was one thing that was always used. And I'm not sure that that's... <laughs> that so... We have a special announcement 
which was already made, yeah. I think. And then I would ask uh, if we could just announce a brief executive session tonight to cover uh, a couple of litigation matters before uh, if you not so then we can just go ahead and- It will be a brief executive session tonight after our meeting is adjourned. I have one additional item. I have two things. Here. Okay, yes. yeah. One additional item is that um, Dr. Pat Patricia DeMarco, mm -hmm is coming to speak with us uh, at the beginning of the workshop meeting in July. And she will be giving us an update about their incredible progress in getting all of their municipal buildings off the grid. And, and they're doing it. Yes. So uh, it, will be, it will be a very interesting presentation, which we all should hear. So uh, um, then Val, you have that? Yeah. A um, few meetings ago, I had a couple of residents uh, approach me regarding the website, um, seeing the chair of communication. That's, you know, one of the things that I, I take serious. One of the things they mentioned was being, uh, having the meeting agendas accessible. They had to, on the website prior, you had to do several clicks, drop downs to get to the meeting agenda. Um, which I think can be cumbersome at times. So we discussed at the communication uh, committee meeting to make it uh, in the front page. So now if you go on our website, you will see a button that says meeting agenda. Mm. Um, so you'll be able to easily yeah. access that um, right. and all of the things that we are talking about and resolutions and things like that. Um, also, you'll notice that there is a save the date for the Churchill Community Day mm -hmm. on August 12th from 11 to 4 on the grounds of the Pace School. Um, so when you go on the website, you will be able to see that and Great. attend. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank Food you. trucks, music, games, activities for everybody. It's going to be a great time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Actually, can I jump on that and mm -hmm. say... As far as community day, we are look we're looking for sponsors. If there's someone in our community that has a business, obviously probably not a business here in Churchill, but a worthwhile business, and they want to promote it and want to be a part of our community day. Please email me. My address is on the <clears throat> on the uh, website, and um, I'd be happy to talk to you and let's work something out. So Deb, what about like small businesses? If somebody in the borough has a small business that maybe they sell art or something, would that be something that- As the, a sponsor? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. oh, sure. Like they, they can have like a like table right. or something? Yeah, like an well, it's a, something yeah, there, there are levels of sponsorship, okay. a very low level and going up, 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 up. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm happy to talk to anybody. Could be, be just a personal sponsor. Yeah. Like, Okay. You could just right. say, I'll just like it's a golf on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could do it on your own. I don't want to sponsor a team. Okay. Right. Which segues me into thanking everyone, including borough officials who came out and, and joined us for our 27th annual golf outing. It was very May, May <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a hot day. It was a hot, hot day. day. Um, we had 144 golfers, had 220 plus guests for dinner afterwards. Right. We raised in excess of seventeen thousand oh, dollars. Fantastic! So, uh, you know. really nice testimonies from the scholarship program. Oh, yeah. it was very yeah. moving. Yeah. Very, very moving. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and all that money, you know, like I say again, I can't repeat. The money raised goes right back up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Into, into the community, sure. and, and and I'm on a uh, Rotary. Deb's on it. I really try to stay local with our money. Sure. Mm -hmm. there, there are international programs, and you have to do that too. You have to. Say, but right. I really like to keep our money local. Mm -hmm. uh, but thanks again for everyone who, who sure. showed up. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Okay, yes. Okay, uh, two more things. Uh, shout out to <laughs> Woodland Hills High School Class of 2020. Congratulations. They, grad, uh, they had their ceremony on Thursday. Uh, they graduated uh, 205 students. Wow. And all those of those students... They received $7.1 million in scholarship. Yeah. Wow. Yep. So we are very, very proud of them. And then one other thing, C.C. Miller Library is having their summer block oh, party right. tomorrow at the Westinghouse Lodge on Greensburg mm -hmm. Pike from 4 to 7. So I hope everybody can try to make yeah. a time to just go there for as okay. much as you can. Thank you. Super. Thanks, Jen. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn? A second. Second. Thanks. Okay. Fine. Adjourned at seven fifty-five. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>